So driving in Iceland in the winter can be either very amazing or very dangerous experience. And I know that for myself because I was a passenger in this car right here, which ended up on its roof. And I just want to make sure that you won't get into a similar situation. But more on that later. From what I can tell by all the reactions to this video, which I recently posted on my Instagram account, this is a topic that many people are a little bit stressed about before the trip. And well rightfully so, because even if weather is good, driving can be still very challenging here if you don't follow certain rules which I'm about to mention in this video. Ok, so let's just begin with this very likely scenario here. Let's say that you are staying for example here in North Iceland in town Akureyri. And I'm just using this example because I live here and I know this area very well. And so let's say that there is a snowstorm during the night and on the second day you decide to leave your hotel in early hours. But what you don't know is that for example right here the road leads over the mountain pass and this stretch of the road often gets blocked by avalanches. And because you don't know the area you might just head out and get stuck in the snow along the way. And that could lead to a very dangerous situation where you might just have to wait for someone to hopefully get you unstuck. And there are many places like that in Iceland that can very often become impossible. What I personally do and what you should do as well is to check the weather conditions and the road conditions before you go to bed and then again in the morning. And you can actually see everything on the web of road.is. The downside is that if you are planning to drive early in the morning, you might not be able to see the updated road conditions. They update the info once they begin to plow the roads, which is between 8 or 9 depending on which road. The next thing that you will most likely encounter here during the winter is the high winds. Very common thing that happens here is when the side wind is so strong that it will push the car off the road. And that's what we see here all the time. And so what you really want to do here is to just reduce your speed to whatever feels safe and comfortable. And after a while you might see cars behind you and you might feel like you are blocking the traffic or something. But don't worry about it, that's probably just locals behind you who are simply used to driving in conditions like that and driving much faster. And what you can do here is to simply just uh, give them a signal with your right blinker basically indicating that there is no incoming traffic in front of you and they can just take you over safely. Another very important thing is that you just never want to lose your focus. You always want to be looking straight ahead of you because usually all it takes is simply one strong wind gust from the side which can push you off the road. And that brings me to the next thing which is always remember to have your both hands on the steering wheel because if there is a strong wind coming from the side you simply cannot be driving like that like you are cruising somewhere on well-maintained roads in the town and I mean also it gets very tiring after a while if you are driving I don't know 200 kilometers uh, with a strong side wind then having your both hands on the steering wheel will definitely save you some energy. Another thing is that the roads have often a packed slippery snow on them which eventually turns into ice and even though that all the rental cars are required to have studded tires you still have to drive very carefully even if you have four wheel drive vehicle. And that brings me to a question whether you should rent a four wheel drive vehicle or not. And here is the thing, I mean many locals drive here even in the smallest car, no problem. But what I always recommend to tourists visiting Iceland in the winter is to rent a four-wheel drive vehicle because of the safety. The weather conditions here are nothing like you are used to. And so I think it's better to pay a little bit more money and simply look at safety first. In the end it can actually save you some money because there is a bigger likelihood you will get stuck in a small car and have to pay someone to tow you out of the snow, which can get very expensive. Another thing which I see here very often is for example if people see some nice view and they just want to pull over on the side of the road. But what they often don't expect is that the snow there is much deeper. And so if you have a small car you are much more likely to get stuck. And same thing goes for like uh, rest stops and viewpoints and all that where people expect the places to be plowed and uh, safe to drive but uh, they are often not. And so I think that having a four wheel drive vehicle can also save you some headache. Ok, flat light conditions and this is something that I hate so much. And if you don't know what flat light is, it is basically a situation when all you see in front of you is white. You don't know if you are going uphill, downhill, can see side of the road or anything. But hopefully this is something that you won't have to deal with because all you can really do here is to come almost to a full stop and drive very very slow and basically just try to uh, see if there are at least road poles on the side of the road and just try to aim to the middle. But sometimes having like a yellow spectrum sunglasses can help as well and generally it can be also much easier on the eyes. What can be a very dangerous situation here is when there is a truck or a snowplow coming from an opposite direction and what you'll notice is that it carries like this huge cloud of snow behind it. Which as soon as it hits your windshield you can easily lose the visibility for a moment. And that could be long enough for you to lose a control and uh, end up going off the road. But you simply just have to predict the situation. If you see this large vehicle coming towards you, you have to slow down because they 
often drive like maniacs and the roads here are just very narrow. And before I tell you more about that accident which I mentioned earlier, I just want to say that these are really just worst case scenarios and all I want for you is to just be well prepared. And to be honest, even though that driving can be often much more difficult here than what you are used to, I personally really enjoy driving here in the winter because the views are just spectacular and also there is just much less traffic here than in the summer months. But anyways, here is the car where I was a passenger a couple of years ago. And if I remember correctly, what happened exactly is that we were coming from a turn and there was just a lot of ice on the road. And this truck unfortunately didn't have any studs on the tires. And so the driver lost control and we started slipping sideways. We basically just hit the side of the road and because there was a lot of snow on the side and the, the truck was sitting so high up, uh, it sort of just went sideways into the snow, flipped and uh, before I knew it I was just hanging upside down. And like I mentioned, everybody was luckily okay and uninjured and we were able to get out of the car safely. And that's why I always say, double check that the car has studded tires. And I mean, it's just safer to have a four wheel drive vehicle and it will definitely save you some nerves and headache if there is a bad weather. Just don't get discouraged, winter in Iceland is very beautiful and having a car here is a must. So all you have to do is to remember the things I talked about. And you might also want to check this video right here, where I go deeper in checking the weather and road conditions, so I'll see you there.